Now today's video, uh, we're going to go over talking about weight and dieting and overall how your weight will fluctuate as you diet. And I got an example of my weight and how I'm using the SMART scale, which I highly, highly recommend people use the SMART scale. Uh, yeah, I want to go basically go over how I use my SMART scale and overall just how your weight will fluctuate when in a diet because it's a pretty big deal. I'm actually going to put up on the screen here uh, my weight chart and show you all exactly how my uh, scale tracks my weight and also how my weight fluctuates and why it's fluctuating the way it is and why we're seeing the numbers jump around the way they are because uh, this may be something that somebody else is going through. And also, if you ever wanted to try this dieting technique that I'm using, which is refeeds, then this would be very, very helpful. What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? <clears throat> uh, but I think this would be very helpful for everybody, and uh, especially if you're wanting to go ahead and do a more advanced diet technique, because I think this technique is advanced, but it's not necessarily super advanced. It's actually pretty easy. You just got to be disciplined about it and you also have to kind of know what you're doing and know the concept of why you're doing it in order to know that you're getting the right results and also if you don't have a smart scale like I got uh, then you might want to get one because do, not, doing this dieting method may get a little bit tricky may get a little bit scary so I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description after the end of this video of my smart scale uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into this thing. Also, I'm going to be doing some fitness Q&As where uh, I basically take calls over Facebook or something like that. It might be a video chat. And the only thing that I'm requiring is that you tag a friend and that you uh, also allow me to re record the footage and uh, or the conversation. And so that way I can post it on other social media websites just because... Uh, you know, I'm trying to grow my audience and whatnot and trying to also spread any type of knowledge. And if I'm spending my personal time, what's up, what's up, what's up? If I'm spending my personal time trying to do like one-on-one -on -one consultations for free, uh, I want to at least be able to spread that with other people and, and have other people have access to those conversations because uh, it may help them with their goals. They may have the exact same goals as you or, or at least similar, and it might help them get on the right track. So let's go ahead and jump into the topic of this video, which is the smart scale and weight and fluctuation while in a diet. Uh, uh, don't do that. Don't do that, dude. Wrong button. All right. There we go. So now I got my scale posted up here. What you're looking at is a one-month chart of, is that what I want? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Dude. Hold on. All right, all right, all right. That was the wrong one. Now, this is uh, like your my overall weight loss, and one thing I want to point out immediately here is in this section right here, uh, you see it's kind of weird and does this weird little S-curve thing. My scale actually got flooded with water because my kids stuffed a bunch of toilet paper in the, in the toilet and it flooded the bathroom and it and my scale could work and so I had to wait for another one to get in on order but you can see how my weight's been trending down ever since I've been on a diet it's going ridiculously well uh, and there's been some modifications right in this area where you start to see things kind of slow down a little bit uh, one I've been in a diet longer two I also started implementing refeeds and I think this is just a more sustain, sustain, a little, sustainable tactic. And the reason why is because a lot of times whenever you stay in a deficit for a super long period of time, as you see this peak down, I might have got somewhere down to like right here, and I may have plateaued and, and been super flat and not been able to lose hardly any other weight without having to drop my calories more or having to do more cardio or something along those lines. Whereas doing refeeds and doing them earlier in the diet – you're going to allow your hormones not to get messed up as soon, and you'll be able to uh, not have hormonal issues at a, at a leaner body fat percentage. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and break down into the uh, one month of this, So which we're going to basically be looking at this little section right in here. Uh, you want to operate computer? No? Okay, cool. There we go. So, uh, come on, dude. All right, there we go. So now we're looking at the one month. And the main thing that I want to demonstrate here in this one month, the main thing that I want to point out, because uh, if you see, like, my numbers are really just jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. And this is what exactly why I'm saying having a smart scale is so important, because this is scary. I'm not going to lie. This is scary. There's days where I'm like, oh, my gosh, especially I hit, like, Wednesdays and stuff like that or a Tuesday. And, you know, I'm, I'm cutting. It's difficult being in a diet and whatnot. And you're like, just, damn, it's like, are the numbers even going down? But... What you'll see is that there's a low, like it keeps going, like it's up here, it's up here, and it hits a low. It's up here, it's up here, and it hits a low. You'll see that all the way through this. It was up here, it hit a low. It went up here, 
it hit a low, it went up here, it hit a low, went up here, hit a low, and it's continually done that. And <clears throat> this week I did drop my calories just a hair bit more just because I want to uh, be a little bit more aggressive with this diet. I would rather go a little bit more aggressive for a couple weeks and then wean back off the diet a little bit as I get more lean. So uh, the reason why we're seeing these ups and downs is because of my refeeds. And, you know, as you can see, this is look basically like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, what you're seeing here, maybe even a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. So you're seeing those numbers there. And uh, then you're, these lower numbers right here, you're seeing a Thursday and a Friday. So I'm doing my refeeds on Saturday or Sunday. So that's why this number jumps up pretty dramatically. You can see like the, where it almost always, boom, shoots up real quick because that's my refeed day. So that's probably Saturday and Sunday. Most likely that's probably Sunday when I weigh in. And then as I go out throughout the week, it's kind of like stuck at the same spot for a few days. And then boom, drops way back off again. Then goes way back up and then drops way back off again. Now, I think that this scale really, or yeah, being able to look at this, this uh, chart here, it really helps with being able to see how being in a deficit for a long period of time uh, may be an issue and why refeeds might be super helpful. So if we looked at the scale and then we pretended instead of this was weight, uh, we pretended this was like your body's nutrition level and your body's uh, nutrient level. Yeah, I think I just said that. Your body's nutrient level and how many, uh, well, how, what am I trying to put? Basically your hormone levels, anything and everything that has to do with you feeling like vitalized and like you have energy and your body has everything it needs, right? So like I said, if you just throw away the scale number and you were to say that these high peaks are are your body in a good nutrient level and these low peaks right here are whenever your body's depleted and now that is something that's very very true so when i go into these last few days and i'm feeling i start to feel like garbage and uh, i feel super depleted and like crap and that's because i'm i that's what my body is actually depleted and if you was to stay in these low areas, meaning staying in a deficit 24-7, which is what majority of people will do, is they'll just stay in a deficit. So instead of having these peaks up here where I'm feeling decent, I'm feeling decent, I'm feeling decent, I'm feeling decent, uh, if you were on a, on a, uh, in a deficit 24-7 and you never had a break any time of the week at all, you'd be in here in these low numbers all the time. It'd be more linear looking like how it was in, this, in the first chart you've seen here. Whereas, see how it's a lot, it's, well, actually you really can't see it from this chart here, so it's not really a good example. But uh, the line would look a lot more flat the way that, the way this like uh, average line chart, or this average line in this chart is. As you can see, you can see the peaks of everything behind the average line, but this is your average line. Now, if you were to stay consistently in a deficit, you would have more, uh, your, uh, your weight range wouldn't fluctuate as much and you would stay more on the average line level and it would be on the low end of your peaks. So instead of being on your peaks, it'll be on the negative side of the peak. And this on, on this negative side of the peak is when you're going to feel like garbage and whenever you're not going to feel good about being in a diet and you're going to feel just like... Uh, just feeling like crap, just feeling like garbage. Yeah, so I, I generally weigh myself all different instances of the day. I try to be, uh, I try to weigh myself at particular times, or hold on, let me put it this way. I try to have particular weigh-ins where I am very strict about the weigh-in itself. So say, for instance, my morning weigh-in is almost always after I use the restroom, at, before I eat, and I pretty much rolled straight out of bed and uh, jumped on the scale. So I try to keep those very tight. I try to keep that number very tight. That way I know, uh, actually in this smart scale, uh, this number right here, I can actually click into this on my uh, phone and it will actually tell me the time that I took that weight, which is really, really useful because I, I don't have to document any of this and it just it tracks it for me. Whereas, you know, if I didn't have this scale, it would be very difficult for me to... Uh, it wouldn't be necessarily very difficult, but I probably wouldn't do it. I ain't gonna lie. I wouldn't take the time out to put in every single weight that I have documented in here. I mean, you see all these different weigh-ins. Some of these weigh-ins are like three weigh-ins a day, and uh, it's because I'm trying to watch my body fluctuate. I'm trying to see like after I just ate a meal, where am I at? Before I ate a meal, where am I at? Uh, when I wake up, where am I at? When I get off work, where am I at? Before I go to bed, where am I at? And I'm just trying to build more data for myself to know like how my body weight's fluctuating and what I'm eating and kind of keeping a, a, a rough uh, 
idea of how my body is fluctuating in weight. And like I said, without this smart scale, I probably would not do that whatsoever. Or I wouldn't do it near as much. I would just worry about my morning low weigh-in, and that's pretty much it. Because that generally that's one of the easiest ones to uh, to be the most consistent and also to be able to stick with the most. Because of like trying, if you try to weigh at night, every night you might forget and go to bed. It's just a lot easier when you wake up and go to the restroom. You just go ahead and uh, hit the scale while you're in there. So... Back to what I was discussing about the whole topic of the low points. Uh, and another thing this really gives is it gives diet adherence. So you're able to just stay in a deficit and not binge eat a lot more because you have Saturday and Sunday that you're able to refeed. Now, I don't really promote refeeding for a single day or a single meal because it's kind of useless when it comes to like hormonal levels. Uh your hormones can't really recover if they're in in any distress at all and you have if you have any hormones that are at low levels or too high of levels you don't really get any hormonal recovery from a single day of eating or a single meal of eating you might feel better after that meal but uh, you really don't get any hormone replenishment until at least two consecutive days of being in a refeed or in a caloric surplus or at least caloric maintenance but I think that is very very important uh, to I think it's very important to the whole concept of this thing is to make sure that I think it's very very important to the aspect of the refeed uh, because especially with me and and going into a competition my body fat percentage is gonna get super low and I'm gonna struggle with home, hormonal issues it's gonna be very preventative to me actually having hormonal issues and I'll be able to drag out some of them issues that uh, people have when they compete but really anybody who's in a deficit for super long periods of time uh, I would definitely implement refeeding like say for instance if you're, if you're like really obese uh, this could the refeed doesn't have to be every weekend like I do so I do my refeeds every single weekend Saturday and Sunday and I, like I said every week and I try to go right to about maintenance calories. I even try not to track my calories that much uh, just because I just want to relax a little bit and, and live a little bit more freely. Uh, one thing I will still do is intermittent fast because that way I don't go way over my calories, especially if I stay up late that night. It gives me the ability to kind of stay on top of my meals. I'll generally keep my first meal lean. That's one thing that I pretty much always keep in my routine. Is I, my first meal is generally around noontime, maybe 11 a.m. if I'm super hungry. But my first meal is at noontime, and then that first meal will be really high in protein and really low in calories. So it may be only like 300 calories or something like that. And then I'll try to wait for my next meal about anywhere between 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, that kind of depends on different life factors and what all is going on. Now that, that one right there I don't stick with as much. And that, that meal right there will be pretty solid, and that will basically... Get me to the point where about maybe 8, 9 o'clock where I'm feeling kind of hungry again. And that's where I'll allow myself to have like some type of snack food at the end of the, end of the night. And I do that even on my deficit days, not even on refeed days. But on my refeed days, I'll allow myself to have more snack food, maybe eat a little bit later into the night. Or my main meal might be a little bit bigger. I, I'm really flexible about that topic and about how I go about that. Like sometimes my morning, uh, my fat, the little... Breaking my fast, that meal is not necessarily going to be 300 calories. I try, to, I, I try to be really strict with that, but then again, like I said, Saturdays and Sundays, I'm just trying to use it to uh, live life. You know, we're, you know, this is family and fit here, and we, we promote a, a life that's sustainable and that's enjoyable. And you're not, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, 100% dedicated to fitness and making like your whole entire life be surrounded by fitness. You know, some people that's what they want to do, and I, personally, if I had the time, I would too. But I have four kids, and it's just not something that I have the luxury of doing. So, uh, I do like to have breaks whenever it comes to you know having the weekends and spending that time with my kids a little bit more. It's just it's just more enjoyable for me, and and I think that a majority of people who are not like fitness nuts, they're they're kind of like that too. They want to just have fitness be part of their life and be an enjoyable part of their life and not make it feel like work. So should we get back into the scale thing? I don't know if there's really much more to talk about. I just think like like I said with the when you're in those low points, if you just consistently stayed at those low points and never had these high points, the majority of the time you'd feel like garbage. When you're in these low points, that's when you can potentially have issues like hormone hormonal issues, muscle loss. There's so many things to that factor in to being in these low points and being in these super depleted states. And that's another reason why you see the number drop so drastically and go up so drastically because the body has reached a point, like it hits right here, and then it's like, boom, depleted. 
Like, and that's just, your hormones can drop off that easily. Just as easily as that weight drops on all of these numbers, pretty much, where they just boom, go boom. They drop down and they shoot back up. They Look how hard this one dropped right here. Uh, your hormone levels can drop just as drastically. Now, generally, your your hormones are not going to follow your weight as quickly. You're, you're probably going to not see that for like a, a day or two later. And that's another thing that's great because, like, I'm hitting this, bam, I'm hitting this low really hard, right? And then, like, literally, like, the next day or the uh, the day after that, I'm spiking it back up and I'm coming back up to this higher level and this more nutrient-dense body, you know? This more, I don't even know really how, to, how do you put that, uh, can't think of the word for it. It's just in a non, it's in a non-depleted state. And like I said, that's where you're going to have most of your hormonal issues. That's where you're going to have stubborn body fat uh issues where you just feel like you're not losing any weight whatsoever and a lot of times just feeling like you're not losing weight is a psychological thing that's why the smart scale thing is such a huge deal and why i promote using a smart scale that automatically tracks all your stuff uh and, and I, I definitely needs to be a smart scale not just something this measures bmi as you can see up here on the top can y'all see that no you can't it's cut off uh but you have weight you have body composition bmi a lot of other things and you know yeah you can track this down to the week the day the month the year and that's super, super awesome just to be able to look at all these different metrics and expand them. I wish I should have done more photos so I could kind of show you uh, how how the scale looks as you break it down to different things. I've actually done a, a live video on this before, I think, where I did, uh, I actually did a screen recording, a screen recording on my phone, and I actually went through the app. And matter of fact, that might be, I think that's in my uh, YouTube video. So if you go to Family and Fit and we have a weight, uh, weight scale video, and in that video, I actually go through the app. I did a screen recording on my app and just went through that. Basically demonstrated everything that the, the app kind of has to offer. So really good product. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Uh, we're also, like I said, in the beginning of this thing, we are doing our, we're going to be doing phone call chats, one-on-one -on -one chats, uh, talking different fitness topics. So, you know, if you're struggling with the diet, if you're, you just have overall fitness questions, if you want to ask me any questions, if you have questions about your own fat loss journey or weight gain journey, if you're trying to build some muscle mass or, uh, whatever your goal is, it don't matter. All questions are pretty much on the table. If you just want to ask some questions about family and fit, those are a go-to. Uh, I'm really trying to do more like fitness oriented questions and, and try to do stuff to really help out with other people's uh, fitness goals and help them on their fitness journey. So I'm going to be doing that free. Uh, I'm not trying to sell anything whatsoever. Like I said, the only stipulations are is I want you to tag a friend for me and you know, tag your friend, tag me so I can see that you tagged a friend. And then uh, and you can just tag any one of my posts or whatever and just maybe put in there in the comments uh, something about the, the free... Uh, what you might call it free consultations or whatever like I said the, 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 oh and the other stipulation is that I that I'm able to record our conversation uh, any sensitive content I'll cut out but I want to be able to record it and use it on social media and I'll, I'll probably chop it up and maybe use it for some YouTube videos maybe use it for some Facebook videos maybe to go live uh, kind of just play around with that I'm not exactly 100% sure how I'm gonna go about that but it's something that I definitely want to do and uh, I'm going to be able to help you guys out and help y'all through y'all's weight loss journey. I keep saying weight loss journey, but I mean fitness journey in general. You know, so family and fit, we're, we're highly into, uh, you know, we have four kids and, and, and we still are able to do fitness. We both have full-time jobs. Well, okay, Ashley's now not working, but we were both working full-time jobs all the time for the past like five years and uh while having kids and doing fitness so we have a pretty good grasp on how to like still make it to the gym and just overall whatever you call it like having kids and fitness family and fit dude that's that's the name of the channel dude make sure just to get at me you can also get at me on inst instant messenger or something like that and just say that hey you're interested in the consultation because uh we're gonna be doing those here soon like probably within the next week i'll start doing videos be, some of them may be similar like this where i just like throw this up maybe like I have like a video of a video chat in like this screen area here of the other person that I'm talking to maybe it'll be like a if I'm doing a live screen I'll do like a screen recording and uh, I'll put my screen recording right here and yeah I don't know we're not we're still gonna play around with how that's gonna go and how we're gonna go about that but just uh, just let me know guys let me know if you're interested I know people are gonna be interested what am I talking about dude so I'll catch y'all the next one
Thank you all for viewing. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found these fitness tips useful. If you want to see more fitness content from us, go check us out on YouTube. Family and Fit will be the first channel to pop up. That's all there is to it. Have a good night, and I'll catch you all later.